All right, please get out your King James Bible and turn to the second book of Peter, chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There's a lot of people will, that will tell you that 2 Peter does not belong in the Bible. They'll say that Peter did not write 2 Peter. And the reason they do this is because it affirms Paul as an apostle. Oh, yeah. So let's take a look. And you decide. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles, of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, scoffers, walking after their own lusts. San Francisco is full of them. Well, then again, so is New York City and Hollywood. And, and I'm, I'm American. I mean, Europe's the same thing. But Knowing this verse, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where's the promise? Where is the promise of his coming? Boy, Jesus said he's coming soon. Well, it's been a couple thousand years. I guess uh, coming shortly is, you know. He does, Jesus, I, I've had atheists even say, well, Jesus doesn't understand the meaning of soon. Okay. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly, willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Let's go back to Verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Hmm. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Well, when I did some studies and, and other people looked at other people's studies who are far more knowledgeable than I will ever be. Going back in the genealogies in the Bible as best we can, I estimate that the earth is approximately 6,000 years old. That would be six days, right? Well, guess what? The seventh day is the Sabbath. Is that what the millennium is going to be when Satan is bound for a thousand years, cast into the bottomless pit, and 
he will no longer deceive the nations for the thousand year millennium, the day of rest. Does that make sense? Are we on God's timetable? The six days and then the seventh day is the, the Sabbath of rest, the millennium? Hmm. That's kind of how I look at it. And I'm not saying I'm right, but um, I think the Jewish, well, the Jewish calendar, I think they're, they even say it's like 57. Let me check that out. All right, according to the Jews, this calendar year is 5778. 5,778. I'm not saying they're right. I mean, but, you know, 5,778 is very close to 6,000. And who's to say that they have it right? Not me. All right, so in so the thing is is if at the end of 6000 years the Lord's going to have probably have a sabbath. Let's take a look at the sabbath. All right, let's take a look. In Exodus um Let's see. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Exodus 23:12. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Exodus 24, 16, And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now, in Exodus 31, verse 15 and 17, six days may work be done, but in the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath, he shall surely be put to death. See, in the Old Testament, under the law, there was, it was rough, people. Let me tell you what, I, I'll take the, I'll take the grace of Christ any day. Christ is my Sabbath of rest. I'll take that any day. Any day. These, these people that want to go back to the Torah, they can have it. And, and when I see them turn on the stove on the Sabbath day, I say, take them out and stone them. Because <laughs> that's what we're supposed to do. Verse 17, Exodus 31, 17. Speaking of the Sabbath here. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And I tell you what, the Lord didn't take the day off because he was tired. You know, Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It was a day for us to relax, recharge our batteries, and reflect upon the words of the Lord. Okay? Here's a good verse for those Torah keeper hypocrites. Luke chapter 13, verse starting in verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. That's a long time to be... Do you know what it means to be infirm? It means crippled. Uh, that's why they used to call places infirmaries. It's an old English... Well, it's an older word, right? And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. 
and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. She couldn't get up. She was crippled. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. That means extreme hatred, people. And the ruler of the synagogue. Who's that? That's the Jew. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work in them, therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? Oh yeah, you hypocrites. Every single one of you takes your animals and, and gives them water on the Sabbath day. What is that? That's work. And don't you feed your animals on the Sabbath day? Yeah. And if you're, and if you're, animal falls into a pit, won't you get them out of the pit on the Sabbath day, you hypocrites? Yeah. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. There you go. All right, let's go take a look at the millennium. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 20. I've read this before in a previous study, but we're going to read it again. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless, bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. Now, here's people who will tell you that the devil and Satan is not the same person. Really? And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Why a thousand years? The Sabbath of rest? i That's what I'm guessing. And cast him into the bottom, bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years." But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. What's another word for resurrection in the church circles? Rapture. So if this is the first resurrection, is there a resurrection before this one? Uh, no. Because if there was, this isn't wouldn't be the first resurrection. First means first. If you're first in line, that doesn't mean that the pre-tribbers get their cut in line before you. Well, then you're not the first. So how can there be a resurrection before the first resurrection? But uh, if you ask these questions... In a Baptist church, guess what? You're going to be told to leave. 
I know. All right, let's go back to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hmm. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. To who? Not believers, but to the unbelievers. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things should be dissolved, shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Now listen carefully. This is where Paul is acknowledged as a brother in the faith. Verse 15, an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Peter just called Paul a beloved brother. And Paul said he was an apostle. So either Peter's wrong, or Paul's wrong, or they're both wrong. Or they're both right. Bingo. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, or letters, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, what things? The end time things and grace and love of Christ, right? As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Oh yeah, Paul writes some things. They're, they're pretty hard to... Some of the things Paul writes are hard to be understood. In which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You see, people that deny Paul are unlearned, they're unstable, and they wrestle Paul's words like they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Oh yeah, that sounds like false False preaching, doesn't it? But grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And they want you to think that this doesn't belong in the Bible. Really? Uh, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own 
destruction. Yeah. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. All right, everybody. This is the end of the Day of the Lord series. Next one I'm going to do is going to be all the places where the Day of Christ appears. And then we're going to compare and contrast the Day of the Lord with the Day of Christ. So I hope you'll stick with me and we'll, uh, we'll get through this. And I tell you what, there's a lot of good information, not only in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament too. And being that the book of Revelation draws all of its symbolism from the Old Testament, or virtually all of it, you know, how can you understand the book of Revelation if you've never read the Old Testament, where it draws all its symbolism from? I mean, the, the book of Isaiah is probably the most quoted book of prophecy in the New Testament. And, you know, how can people understand it? They can't. I mean, the scriptures is one book. It's an unbroken line of, it's like a, a cloth woven together. You can't, you can't rip it apart and, and expect to understand it. And that's what dispensational theology does. They chop the Bible up. And I do believe in dispensations, two of them, the old and the new, the old covenant, the new covenant, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Moses was given the law. That's what to dispense means. That's what a, dispen a dispensation means to be given something. It's from the root word that they get the root, the, the word dispense, dispensation. Moses was given the law. The Old Testament, the Torah, if you will. The Old Covenant. Christ, the New Covenant, the New Testament, gave us grace. You want to go with the Torah keepers and, and go back to the law where you get stoned for not keeping the Sabbath? Or do you want the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? who They, they don't even like his name. Oh, it's... It's Yeshua HaMashiach. Well, I'm sorry, but my Bible was written in Greek and then translated by scholars in English. People that could read the Hebrew, people that could read the Greek, people that knew Latin, people that knew multiple languages. King James assembled the greatest scholars of his day and I'll tell you what, the Anglican church of his day is not the Anglican church of this day. If they would have caught a priest sodomizing a boy, uh, he'd have been hanging from a tree. He wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been uh, moved around to a different church and given a promotion. That's not how things would have worked. So... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In Jesus' precious name, amen.